Hey everyone, it's Ryan Rice. On this episode, I want to go over the kayak cart, you know, that my kayak sits on, how I load it into my five and a half foot bed pickup, and how I strap it down. So if you guys have been wondering where is your fishing videos, don't worry guys, fishing is still on this channel. I just wanted to catch up on some like how to's and some informational videos that people have been asking me about. Plus I haven't been on the water that much this month because I haven't been chasing first place for the, uh, you know, the monthly challenge for KBF. I've been wanting to kind of catch up on some of the videos for you guys. Uh, you know, based on the comments or some ideas I've had in my head that I want to explain to you so you guys know how I do, how I operate my stuff right now, how I get the kayak to the water and all that other good stuff. And on this video, obviously I'll probably talk about 16 other things like I always do. That's just me. I'll see something that makes me think of something else. But, you know, people have been asking me about this kayak cart. I just kind of want to show you how I built it. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, do it, uh, do a video actually as I built it, but it's pretty cut and dry how you see the framing is on this. But next time, if I build another cart, uh, I'll let you guys know. It's just a temporary solution for me right now because you know I'll be getting a trailer again. But if anybody's in the South Carolina area that's going to want this cart in a couple months or sooner, just reach out to me. You're more than welcome to it. Just come and pick it up with your pickup because all I'm going to do with this thing when I'm done with it is probably cut it up and throw it away in the garbage. I'll just save the wheels. You can see the kayak cart itself is pretty simple. I like to overdo everything. You don't have to use a four x four post like I did, but I use an untreated four x four post for the corners. Three inch PVC at the right distance between, you know, where it has to be for my particular kayak, the Hobie PA-14. I think it's 11 and a half inches center to center, and that fits perfectly for the hull. Every kayak is different. Some are on a little bit of an angle, et cetera. But to get these screwed down to the top of the actual wood frame is I just make a larger hole. You know, I use a unit bit, you can use a hole saw, and that gives you access to be able to get in there with a screw and washer and get this screwed down to the uh, wood frame itself. This is my fishing line holder that I have clamped on here. And this is how I spool up my reels and I just leave it clamped on my cart too as well. Basically, it's just two by four screwed in you know, basically making a square frame around the four by four post. At the bottom here, I also put a piece of plywood. As you can see, it gives you a place to store all your gear in one location in your garage. I mean, I don't have much on here right now because I have things kind of scattered, but you could keep all your gear at the bottom, on the bottom of this cart, fishing tackle boxes, whatever you want to put here. I mean, you can get really elaborate with this and build like, you know, shelves underneath here and you know break it up with some shelves all that stuff if you really want to get organized you know i like my walkie pack outs i could screw more pack out plates to this if i wanted to and keep the drawers on here you know you can go as crazy as you want with this cart at the end of the pvc i did do some coupling just as a smoother transition kayak to slide on it's the same framing underneath it's just a square around this with some cross supports just like the top and that's what supports the plywood. You just gotta cut your plywood the size of fit. You know, I just kind of basically notched it around the four by four post. Uh, you can put the plywood down and actually bring your post, you know, cut it through it and actually have the plywood come all the way around if you wanna get really nice and do a nice job with that. I don't wanna go into that much detail with this. I just wanted a sturdy cart. I use a larger locking casting wheel. So all four wheels have locks on them to hold them in place. And all you gotta do is just give it a flip up. And you wanna spend the money on the casters because the larger casters move around freely in your garage, especially if you have a rougher garage. But I did all four wheels are, you know, pivoting casters. This way you can really move the cart around, do what you need with it. It goes in all different directions very easy. You can see how easy I can move that around. The casters themselves, that's another reason why I like using a four by four or you can double up a, a two by four but you don't need to go this heavy duty, but I just did because it gives a good place, a nice four inch, you know, flat spot for the casters to screw onto and keeps it really sturdy and doesn't come apart. You can, like I said, just use a single two by four coming down in the corners and it'll still be, you know, plenty strong, but I think it'll have a little bit more movement to it. Cause once, you know, but once you tie everything in, and screw everything together. I like using screws because you can always just unscrew it, take it apart and reuse the lumber. Screws really hold it tight and you know, suck the wood together really good. So it makes a very sturdy cart. I mean, the Hobie PA is one of the heaviest kayaks in the market. 
But if you have a lighter kayak and that's what you run with or a shorter kayak or you know, a kayak that's under 100 pounds, you can easily get away if you want to save the money, especially right now with the price of everything in lumber, you can just go get away with just a single two by four in the corner and it'll be just fine. You just gotta come up with a solution at the bottom to screw your casters. I guess if you use a single two by four, you know, if it came down to here, you can put your casters into that two by four and probably, you know, this piece out here or whatnot and still have enough meat for your casters to screw into. I just think the kayak carts are, you know, nicer because it keeps your kayak flat, you know, keeps it su keeps it supported. Now you don't even have to use the PVC. You could just, you know, put some cross braces across there and just lay your kayak right on the two by fours. That's fine too. I just like the PVC. It just slides a little easier onto your truck. You can keep all your gear together in one area with your kayak. You throw it, you know, roll up to your truck, throw your kayak in the truck and load your gear up and everything's on the cart. So it kind of prevents you from forgetting an item too. If you basically do the same routine, put it onto your truck, you know, and then unload this gear. When you get back, put it on the cart, your kayak on the cart, and put all your gear right back on the bottom shelf of your cart. But if you keep everything in the same place all the time and do the same routine, you're gonna have a less chance of forgetting something when you get, you know, an hour away or even five minutes away when you think that you're all ready to go and you unload your kayak and you're like, oh, I forgot that. And I've even done it, you know? So we've all forgotten something at the house. And sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes it's a very important thing, like your catch board, especially if you're in a tournament. You don't want to forget your catch board. You know, with the Hobies, you don't want to forget your fins. So, and you, and you know, you can get away with forgetting your net for the day, but if you lose that fish, you'll be upset. So it's just a good idea to keep everything on the cart in the same area in your garage and do the same routine. It's going to really prevent you from forgetting something and, you know, kind of ruining your morning or afternoon or whatever you go. To load this in the truck, it's very easy. I roll it up to the bed extender and slide it right on. I'm going to show you right now. So what I do is I'll push the cart right up to the bed extender and just slide it right onto the truck itself. Get it most of the way up. And being I have the pack out in there, I kind of put it on an angle. Cause that pack out always stays in there. And then I pull the cart out. And I put it back in the garage and lock the wheels till when I come back. So you can see, even with a five and a half foot bed, the kayak fits in here just fine with the bed extender. There is no worry about, you know, the kayak not being in far enough or being supported. You can see the bed extender gives it plenty of support past the midway point. And you can see how much actually it hangs past the bed extender. It's not that much. And I just put a, put a, uh, a flag on it, you know, and I just have a little uh, orange flag that came with this, this bed extender. Uh, this is an inexpensive bed extender. You can see I put uh, like a, you, you know, like an old tile on here just for some protection with some Gorilla tape. It's also gonna be my secondary uh, way transporting the kayak for the times when I don't wanna be you know, hauling the trailer around and I just want to go like into the woods or, you know, to a place where it's really hard to have a trailer. This still gives me the option, even with a five and a half foot bed, to be able to put my 14, well, it's 13.8 is the Hobie PA uh, 14. So people say, oh, you can't transport a kayak and a five and a half foot bed. Yes, you can. I've done it many, many times years ago. And this is how I primarily transported my kayak. And, you know, with the bed extender, it's just fine. If I was gonna do this primarily, transport my kayak this way, uh, in the past I have had the boondocks, um, you know, the boondocks bed extender, which is nice because it kind of it kind of curves up and it's aluminum and it's lightweight, and they have two different versions. One, it's kind of like a more of a more or less a one piece, and then they have the the groovy landing gear, uh, not the landing gear, the groovy uh, T bone that kind of has a little bit more pieces to it and everything. That one's okay, but I don't really care for that one. I actually like the original bed extender from them because it's rounded tube and it's smooth. You know, the groovy T bone has the track in it which is nice but i think that kind of scratches the kayak up a little bit even with their protection sleeve i like the original uh t-bone from uh, boondocks but being this is my you know temporary and like just my secondary way of transporting a kayak i just got an expensive one from amazon i think these used to be like 60 bucks but i think i paid like 70 or 80 for this one just like everything else right now it's everything's come up in price but this goes in there very easily. So you don't need a ratchet strap. You know, you can use a ratchet strap, but as everybody says, you know, ratchet straps may not be the ideal thing the way you transport in your kayak because a lot of 
people will either cinch them down too much and you can crack your frame uh you know the the hull itself you can cause damage to your kayak if you over crank it now if you use ratchet straps just do it a couple clicks that's all you need this is not going to go anywhere you know the, the best thing to do is use a good cam strap this one is i think from home depot uh i forgot what brand it is i'll see if i can find the link for this one but this has a they call it the grizzly claw this has a really good cam you know the cam lock itself this does not come loose i know there's a couple other ones out there that i've used i know nrs and other brands also have cam straps for kayaks but this one here i feel like it, it really it really holds down and doesn't come loose because if you know cam straps they do come loose over time or while you're traveling down the road and i like these straps the best you can see in my truck i have the tie downs which are down low that came from the factory and i also have these here which is like the ford back plate uh i forgot what, what the name of it is offhand but i just use the uh it's like those tracks you uh the, the easy track whatever it's called that you usually see like in like big 18 wheeler trailers and all that stuff they use those uh easy track along the wall where they can move these hooks along this you know the wall wherever is needed for their cargo it's the same concept so instead instead of paying for the expensive ones from ford i just got the ford back plates which are these here and you can see these uh rings come in and out real easy and they make different versions ones with like straps ones with the rings but i use this upper one because it actually is a good height to go right inside of here and behind the cables on my fish finder so i just feed it through the h rail Take it to the other side, walk around. Like I said, I work it behind the cables on the fish finder so I'm not putting any strain on it. And it locks it right into the, you know, holds it right into the H rail part right here. And I go to the other uh, hook I have in my truck, come back around, make sure it's straight. And then I tie it onto the other hook and then I just cinch it down that is it that's all you got to do i just put a little uh overhand knot in the line and you can see it's not perfectly flat against that but what happens when i pull this back here a little bit you know i'll pull the kayak back just a bit and it keeps it tight against that strap and i'm telling you these straps here these cam straps that i got from depot i'll try to find them put the link below uh it says keeper on it and it says like grizzly claw on the actual cam lock itself these hold tight they do not come loose and then I stick another strap here in the back and I put it in the hook here, the little hole in the uh, bed extender and on the other side. And I just cinch it down, same thing. I do an overhand knot in this just to hold it. And I've driven um, well over 500 miles and even the overhand knot in this stays put. This material is a little bit of a rougher material so it's very like, you know, grippy. And this thing does not go anywhere, as you can see. Yes, the bed extender will flop around, especially this is more of an inexpensive one, but there's a little bit of movement to it. But this will not come out of your truck. You know, what I suggest to do is, you know, if you're doing long distance trips with your kayak in the back of the truck, you know, when you stop for gas, when you stop to use the bathroom, just come back, double check your straps, make sure they're tight, you know, and you can keep an eye on this when it's, in, you know, in your back window as you're driving. That's it. Just make sure that your straps stay tight. That's why I like these straps, because I've been through so many cam straps. They always come loose, you know, over time. So I transported, like I said, I transported my kayak this way over 500 miles and I never stopped to check it. I mean, I'll, I will keep an eye on it out my back window, but I mean, it'll take a lot. You'd have to have, you know, this strap come completely loose and you'd have to have this strap come loose as well because even if that strap up front came loose, it's still gonna be held against the back of your kayak. It's gonna grab on something either you're, you know, I leave my pack in the back of this because it's tied down with the night eyes and the, you know, the, the little hook straps I have here. I leave this in there. My chair, it depends. If I'm going short distance and it's not raining or not cold out, I'll leave my chair strapped on here too. But something's gonna grab this before it really falls out of your truck. So by then you're gonna, you're gonna feel or, or notice the kayak moving around more or you'll actually get some flapping around and some banging and you, you know, you can tell that something's loose. This is an easy way to transport your kayak. We like this way, but you know, the only reason we're changing back up to the trailer is because I like to keep all my gear, you know, outside of my truck, not inside my truck. So I can put all my gear and everything in the back of my truck here. If you watch my other uh, videos, like my accessory video to kayak fishing, you know, truck accessories, you know, I have the Milwaukee pack outs on in here. And once this is out of the bed, you know, I'm gonna have pack outs all around 
uh, the bed of my truck to keep some extra gear organized and everything's gonna go in the back of the truck which we kind of like that this way when we're traveling everything's in the bed of the truck the kayaks on the trailer but that's a whole nother video but you know me i always go into everything else when i'm talking on the video this can be your permanent solution this can be a temporary solution just to get it moved around but this is a good way to get you know back into the woods or when you go to places where you, it's hard to use a trailer you can throw it in a short bed of a truck i can guarantee even with the ford ranger you could probably pull this off no problem but you know if you're scared of taking your hobie pa 14 in a short bed of a truck or in a bed of a truck don't be like I said, I've done this like six years ago. This is how I primarily transported my kayak. Now, when I get to the ramp or to the launch, all I do is I park my truck. I put my boondocks landing gear into the spot. I slide this off the back. And as I'm coming back, you know, I get the, I have the wheels in it and I just lower it on the ground. I grab it from the front of the kayak and I just bring it down to the ground. So it's very easy to slide it off the bed extender. You know, the main thing is, you know, when you do it this way is I have a set of, you know, wheels that you can put your kayak on. I like the uh, the boondocks landing gear. It's just something that's always there. It's built into your kayak. And if you put it in right and do it right, you don't have to worry about your haul cracking. You know, there's a lot of old horror stories about, you know, this causing too much stress on your kayak. But I don't think there's a problem with it if you don't overload your kayak. You know, when it's empty like this, just pulling it off, putting it on the wheels. And even when you take it down to the ramp, I think if you don't overload your kayak, I mean, these things are rated for a lot of weight. And with this backing plate here on this particular model with the Hobie, like I said, I've had no problems with these. I think they, you know, I think they came up with a good solution with this backing plate in here and it's held out very well. I'm sure if you have a bad pour or somebody who overloads their kayak, you know, if you're worried about overloading it, you know, take this down by the water. If you do put a lot of gear in here, you know, I take this down to the, you know, I launch this off and I take it down to the uh, ramp with all my gear on it. But I, I, at the same time, I don't overload it. If I know I'm going to have a lot of extra gear on here, you know, I could put most of it on my kayak, take it down to the ramp, and then just bring the rest down to the, you know, to your kayak. So you're not transporting your full weight of your kayak and everything on just the, you know, the landing gear. But, you know, having a set of wheels is the key to launching out of the back of your truck. Yes, you could pull this right up to the water and put it into the water if you want. But, you know, I think just getting ready out of the way of the ramp is, you know, is what you want to do anyway. You don't want to be blocking the ramp from others. But be able to just pull up to a parking spot. This keeps it simple and you can rig your kayak in your parking spot and then walk it down to the ramp with the wheels. So when I get home, all I do is I just undo my straps and I did make this strap in the back a little shorter so there wasn't much that much over of a, uh, you could say your tag into the strap. I cut these straps to the size I needed and I have one longer in the front, one shorter in the back so I kind of know which one goes where. I bring my cart up to the back of this and I slide it right up onto it. I kind of get the PVC trunks kind of lined up where it sits on the kayak itself. I'll lock the wheels in the back. And then I just come up here and I just pull back. I do have a lip here in the garage, so sometimes I gotta grab the cart to get it up. That's why I wanted to build the cart a little stronger because I kind of beat it up a bit. I don't have a very super smooth transition. And of course the camera's in the way right now, but usually it's a little easier than that. But yep, yeah, just unload it. Got to pull back a bit. And I just wheel back into my into its home. Put it where it needs to sit. And I lock two of the outside casters. So everything sits right here. I hope this video gave you a little explanation of how I built this cart, even though I couldn't show you in person. I just kind of walked through it with you. But it's very easy. All you have to have, all you need is just some basic hand tools, you know, cordless drill, some screws, and at least a circular saw. Uh, I think when I built this, I actually probably used my chop saw to keep the edges a lot nice, you know, a lot uh, more square. To make it easy, you can do a square cut with a circular saw with just putting your square on the two by four and running your rip fence against that square. And it'll give you a nice clean cut when you when you do cuts with some wood. That's a little tip. I, sh I showed you how easy it was to load it and unload it from the truck, even though the camera was in the way the one time. But it's a real simple, get it into the 
truck, pull it off the truck, keep everything together, keep it organized, and it's going to prevent you from forgetting things on the water. And it keeps, you know, when you get to the water, and it keeps everything in one area in your garage your kayak, your gear, your paddle, etc. So, as always, guys, until next time, don't worry, fishing's coming. There's going to be plenty of fishing videos out there. But until next time, be safe on the water, and I'll catch you guys on the water. Thanks for watching.